The trees stand naked and unwavering, leaves having changed and fallen barren, and tall outlining the dimly lit sky. The ominous breath of winter is felt. It shows as we step outside, rubbing our hands in the cold, as we speak and breathe, and the outline of winter is seen in the frosty clouds that escape our mouths. Many birds have already escaped with their wings now reaching the southern warmer warmth, the winds of warmth. We may wonder why we have stayed in the cold and empty barren lands as winter reaches our doorstep. When visiting the streams that are starting to freeze in the early morn, low branches creak and crack as the chill of the winds rustles through their brittle branches. Beavers swim eagerly, grabbing the twigs, moving branches that are far larger than their bodies would seem to be able to handle. Through instinct, sheer will, and with the help of their lodge, they persevere, building a dam suitable, warm, and inviting. This structure that will house them through the days where the sun peeks out and through the nights where the winds whip and whirl and howl. Instinct, survival, and joy. These gregarious little ones know that each season carries new responsibilities, new pleasures, and life can be found in all seasons. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Earth and Sky as we venture into the beaver moon. It's an exciting time. What you just saw next to me was a beautiful piece of art done by Man in the Moon Metalworks. The beaver moon is what they uh, created for us this time. And uh, the astrological components of this moon are really exciting because they flow perfectly with the season and with what the beaver moon represents. So if you're wanting to make some changes and adapt and find joy within each season, yes, even the winter season that's coming amongst us, the magic and medicine of the beavers is what you want to look towards. So the November moon will actually be able to be seen full on Thanksgiving night. On the 23rd, it rains full. This moon is also called the morning moon, the tree moon, or the first frost moon. The aspects of this moon include aquamarine, if you're wanting to use stones with it, or peppermint, if you're wanting to use an oil, which makes a lot of sense, being that the frost is just coming in, and peppermint is such a frosty smell. The moon in 2018 is also in the sign of Gemini, my two favorite signs, Gemini and Leo. Um, being in Gemini means that it's being ruled by the planet Mercury and is for thinking and quick thinking, for examining your patterns of thought and making changes too, being able to make swift and quick changes. Be aware consciously about what is working in your life and what is not working in your life. Because as you look at all of those pieces, you'll be able to figure out how you want to adapt and what changes you want to make and what you want to keep in your life. When you look at it honestly and directly, you can make the best plans for this next year that we've just stepped into. We just talked two weeks ago about how as we crossed into Samhain, the new wheel is starting. The wheel of the year is shifting. And so some of us celebrate that as the new year. Even if you celebrate January 1st as the new year, that dawn is coming very quickly. So examining your thoughts, your processes, and your habits right now is perfect and really right in step with the beaver moon. It's a time to be flexible and adaptable. Leave behind any broken habits, any broken thoughts, any broken dreams that you've had and reinvent yourself because that's this time of the year as we're going in with the winter. It comes into our planning time, wrapping up the season of the harvest, bringing in the winter. So you're harvesting and you're planning. And that really fits along with the moon cycle as well, because as the full moon comes, all of those plans that you started at the new moon are coming into fruition with this beautiful beaver moon. 
Beavers are really busy right now building their winter dams, fortifying their structure during this beaver moon. And there's a few things about beavers that as you understand them, you can really draw their medicine into your life. Beavers, beavers are actually monogamous. They tend to mate in pairs and can live together about 10 to 15 years um, as a pair. As many as eight or 12 beavers will be a family unit and may live in a lodge together, but the average is really about five that tend to live in the lodge together. Um, they tend to, they are herbivores, so they eat trees and bark and shrubs, um, the inner bark from the trees, shrubs. Um, and beavers are, an interesting fact about beavers, uh, beavers practice coprophagia. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, um, but that means basically that they can eat their feces. This is a way that some herbivores gain vital nutrients. Sometimes in life we experience situations where it feels like we are just surrounded in feces. There's a more modern word for that, but I'm not going to use it. So if we look at the beaver, what can we learn from that? Figuring out what you can gain from a situation it can be that can be quite uncomfortable at times, but there are always lessons to learn when you feel like you're at the bottom of the pile. Are there relationships, jobs, patterns, behaviors that you need to change? What can you do to empower yourself? Don't let the smell of it stick to you. Instead, see what you can digest. Pick yourself up. Shower and imagine that all of the bad of the situation is going down the drain and your own vitality builds within you. Then adapting again with the beaver moon and the aspects of Gemini that are currently flowing through, rethink, be flexible, be adaptable. Realize that today is a new day. That right now the astrological correspondence really will boost your efforts with this, but the same lesson can be felt through all of life. I do strongly urge you to examine it and make those changes now, though. What else can we learn from beaver medicine at this time of the November moon? As I mentioned, beavers mate for life and live in a lodge with others, usually about five, but sometimes as many as eight or twelve. And uh, so that can t teach us to look and see who is important in your life. Who are you grateful for? Who are you happy to share space with? It might be people you live with and it might be where it expands far out beyond just the people that are in your home. What do you do to give back to those in your life that you're grateful for? And how do you open yourself to trust and allow them into your life as well? Sometimes it's harder to ask for help or to receive what others are giving than it is to give. And so balance is really always the key. You might really enjoy and love giving in this time of giving, and I'm glad that you're doing that. That's an important part of this season. But also be grateful when somebody gives something to you. Honor that they are showing their love to you with that, and receive that willingly, and know that you are able to reciprocate that through love and attention, and just knowing that you have value within yourself as well. Sometimes we might not feel like we are in the place that we chose. I often hear people who complain about winter weather. Some of those people complain about the summer too, though. <laughs> <laughs> but see if you can turn your thoughts higher. What makes winter so special? How can you make it special for you? Learn, be flexible, and adapt. Those are your three key words this time. In our day and age of invention, there are so many things that make life easier. I can't imagine living in the 1800s with the winds whipping around like this and not having a stable structure with the insulation that we have now, with just having the warmth of a fire and not the electricity. Be grateful for all of these great things that we have now. And there's even other simple inventions now too where you can go out and enjoy the winter weather, those hot packs that can go into your gloves or into your shoes. Don't be afraid to use the inventions that have come up so you can go out and play in this weather. See what there is to see and do and keep yourself warm as you go out and explore. Be flexible, adapt. Even as some animals, and some people fly south for the winter. 
uh, many others are flying in. So the snowy owls soon will be joining us here in Michigan. They're in their migration time now. And then the ice competition that's in Frankenmuth draws visitors and sculptors from around the globe into our wintry mix. There are so many festivities out in the snow and many more people are inside their homes just as the beavers completing their final touches on their dens. Do you find yourself doing the same? Are you making changes as you're preparing for Thanksgiving guests? Are you readying your home for Hanukkah, Christmas, and Yule? Do you find yourself wanting to burrow down under the covers for a few extra minutes each day? Or maybe you want to hibernate a few extra hours? <laughs> Honor the aspect of beaver medicine within yourself. Remember that even in the chaos, that you must make time to play. Beavers are so playful. They find joy in many things. Sometimes you'll find them in the winter as they flex their backs back and they sled down on their bellies like a built-in sled. <laughs> they always find time to play. So being prepared, being flexible, adaptable, social, and playful are the gifts that the beavers bring to us on this beautiful November full moon. I hope you've enjoyed this live talk with us. Please like this video and share it out. We love it when you share it. We love your comments as well. Have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving and a beautiful November full moon.